Imagine being counted out, written off, and then returning stronger than ever. That's exactly the story we're witnessing with Huawei. For years, the company was cornered, slapped with sanctions, cut off from the world's most advanced technology, and left to struggle for survival. Many thought Huawei's glory days were behind it, but fast forward to today and the story has taken a dramatic twist. Huawei is back, and not quietly, but with a statement that's shaking the tech world. This is more than just about a phone or a chip. This is about resilience, innovation under pressure, and a battle that reaches far beyond gadgets. It's about the future of global technology. And right in the middle of it stands the newly unveiled Kirin 920 processor, powering Huawei's latest Pura 80 series. Before we dive in, let me ask you something. If you enjoy following these stories where tech, geopolitics, and innovation collide, hit that like button and share this video with a friend who'd appreciate it too. It helps the channel grow, and more importantly, it helps these big stories reach people who care about where the world is heading. Now let's break down what Huawei's comeback really means. For the first time since 2020, Huawei has proudly displayed a flagship chip model number right in its main interface, Kirin 9020. That might sound like just another technical update, but it's not. It's Huawei standing tall and saying to the world, we found our way around your sanctions. The Kirin is back. The chip itself is no slouch. Built with fully self-developed CPU cores, big, medium, and small, it features a brand new architecture with significantly increased frequency. In plain language, Huawei's engineers didn't just wait out the storm, they spent those years of blockade rethinking design, squeezing every ounce of power out of the domestic manufacturing capabilities they had access to. The result isn't just survival, it's proof of ingenuity. But to see why this matters, you've got to zoom out, because Huawei's story is never just about Huawei. Global smartphone shipments recently ticked up slightly, about 1.4% year over year. On its own, that's not headline material, but here's the kicker. For the first time in four years, Huawei has reclaimed the number one spot in China's market. Think about that. Beating out Vivo, Oppo, Xiaomi, and yes, even Apple. The only foreign player left in China's top five has lost serious ground. This isn't just market share. This is geopolitics playing out in the palm of people's hands. Under external pressure, Chinese consumers are showing loyalty to local brands. Every Huawei phone sold isn't just a purchase, it's a signal. And it's not just the hardware making waves. Huawei's Harmony OS, its homegrown operating system, has quietly crossed a point of no return. Over 100 million devices are now running Harmony OS Blue. A Huawei executive called this the line of life and death for an operating system. That line has been crossed. Harmony is no longer just a backup for Android, it's a living, breathing ecosystem. What makes this story even more compelling is how Huawei is building trust. The company has been listening to users, promising fast fixes to crashes or lags, adding popular features like WeChat location sharing, and constantly smoothing out performance. Middle-aged and older users who value reliability and stability over flashy gimmicks are seeing a company that pays attention. That builds loyalty. And let's not overlook the partnerships. Harmony OS is now deeply integrated with giants like China Railways, Alibaba's full suite of apps, and over 50 apps from Tencent. Imagine trying to compete with that on its home turf. It's like bringing a knife to a gunfight. But to really understand the pride Huawei is showing off today, you've got to remember where this journey began. Back in 2009, Huawei was mostly a telecom equipment maker. When smartphones started transforming the world, they made a bold, risky decision. Let's build our own chips. Their first attempt, the K3V1, wasn't impressive, but it planted a seed. A company leader even said, I'll give you 400 million a year and 20,000 people. We must stand on our own feet and reduce dependence on the United States. Imagine saying that then, and how prophetic it sounds today. By 2013, Huawei introduced the Kirin brand, and the progress was fast. The Kirin 910, then the 950, then the 960. In 2017, the Kirin 970 broke new ground with AI built into the chip itself. 
In 2018, Huawei shocked the industry with the Kirin 980, the world's first 7 nanometer chip. And in 2019, they unveiled the Kirin 9995G, integrating 5G directly. Huawei wasn't just catching up, it was leading. And then came the darkest hour. In 2019, the US put Huawei on the entity list. By 2020, sanctions escalated. Foundries like TSMC, Huawei's vital partner, were cut off. The Kirin 9000, a masterpiece with over 15 billion transistors, seemed like it would be the company's last great chip. For many, this was the end of the road. But here's where the story takes a turn. Huawei refused to quit. One leader's words became their battle cry. When paths narrow, the brave are the ones who win. By 2023, the Mate 60 Pro quietly launched with a domestically produced chip, the Kirin 9000s, manufactured by SMIC in China. That was the beginning of a new chapter. The Kirin 9010 followed, and now the 9020 with a 12-core architecture, efficiency rivaling Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, and even 5.5G satellite communication built in. Think about that for a second. Sanctions were supposed to choke Huawei out. Instead, they forced Huawei to double down on self-reliance. Out of the fire came innovation. What does this mean for the future? For one, it shows China's semiconductor industry is finding its own feet. Huawei's comeback is a banner moment, not just for the company, but for an entire nation's tech ambitions. It says, pressure doesn't kill us. It makes us invent. Here's where I'd love to hear from you. Do you think Huawei's comeback is sustainable long-term, or is it still limited by the challenges of manufacturing at the cutting edge? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'll be reading them all. Now, back to the bigger picture. We're witnessing a shift in consumer behavior. In China, loyalty to homegrown tech is growing. Apple, Samsung, and others are being pushed to the margins. Huawei has managed a perfect synchronization. Its hardware comeback powered by Kirin and its software ecosystem powered by Harmony OS. Together, they form a shield that's harder and harder for outsiders to penetrate. But this battle is far from over. Western governments won't simply stand by and watch. The US-China tech war is going to escalate in boardrooms, in labs, and in global markets. Each side knows the stakes, control over the next generation of technology. And yet, the lesson here is crystal clear. Huawei's story shows that resilience and perseverance matter more than circumstances. The journey from the clunky K3V1 to the sleek Kirin 9220 is a story of grit, creativity, and refusing to give up. When resources are scarce, when the odds are stacked against you, the true innovators find a way. Looking ahead, Huawei still faces challenges. Its chips aren't yet built on the most advanced nodes. Geopolitical tensions could tighten further. But the foundation is solid and the momentum is real. With Harmony OS gaining critical mass and strategic partnerships multiplying, Huawei has built more than a comeback. It's built a fortress. And so, August 15th, 2025 will be remembered not just as the day a new chip was unveiled, but as a defining moment in tech history. A day that showed the world the king is back. Huawei's journey offers a timeless lesson. Adversity can either break you or force you to grow stronger. And in Huawei's case, it's the latter. If you've enjoyed this deep dive into Huawei's comeback, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss the next chapter in this unfolding tech war. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.